It takes one to know one. Have you ever heard that adage before? Howdy. Welcome to Write Your Family History. I'm Devin Noel Lee, a published family history author who wants you to learn how to quickly write non-boring family histories to share your legacy with your loved ones. Well, today I will share a tool that can help you write your non-boring family histories. And yet, this tool is rather boring to you. Like I said, it takes one to no one. So drink some coffee, do some sit-ups, or any other task to keep yourself awake while I share the tips, and in the end, it will be worth it. Many genealogists who embark on the journey of writing family histories want to write non-boring family histories. <laughs> Are you one of them? One quick fix to many story-based histories is eliminating passive voice throughout your text. While this sounds simple or a little confusing, it's actually a little challenging, <laughs> especially for me. But thankfully, several tools can spot weak writing and help us make small changes to our manuscripts. Using passive verbs is a skill taught in my children's grammar program. If passive tense is grammatically correct, why should writers avoid using it? Andrew Pudewa, author of Teaching Writing, Structure, and Style, declares that a verb can make or break a sentence. He suggests banning weak verbs such as get, got, go, went, see, saw, say, and that. They are grammatically accurate, but very weak. For instance, instead of saying John went to church every Sunday, you'd replace the boring word went with one of the following. He attended church every Sunday. He bounced to church every Sunday. He trudged to church every Sunday. To better understand boring verbs and how to replace them, pick up a copy of the Student Resource Notebook by the Institute for Excellence in Writing. A link will be in the description box. Now, as you improve the quality of your verbs, you can still run afoul by how you structure your sentences. Compare the following sentence. John and Sarah were married by Reverend Howell. Reverend Howell married John and Sarah. In the first option, the sentence subjects does not do the action. The Reverend marries the couple, but the couple is the sentence subject. In the second option, notice that you'd use fewer words with a clearer meaning because the Reverend does the action. Again, while passive tense is correct in many instances, the more you can eliminate this in your family's story, the more engaging it becomes. How do you spot passive tense sentences? Ugh. Once you're in the grammatical editing phase of writing your family history, do a text search for the following word. Have, has, had, is, was, were, are. If an action verb follows these helping verbs, you frequently are staring at a passive tense sentence. But helping verbs do not always indicate passive voice. Since this may be confusing and difficult to spot in a family story more than a thousand words, leverage passive voice checkers to lend a hand. I use Grammarly and have used it for many years to help myself and my children write better reports and stories. While Grammarly has a free option, the passive voice checker is only available through the premium plan. Catching passive tense sentences is one feature worth the expense. Grammarly can work on any website when you're writing. For instance, it will turn on when using Google Docs, Facebook, or any other website where you can type a comment. You will often spot Grammarly suggestions in my videos here on Family History Fanatics and Write Your Family History. When you use passive voice, Grammarly highlights the problem and recommends changing the sentence. However, you'll need to write the changes yourself. The Hemingway app is a free tool that not only highlights and counts your use of passive voice, it helps other ways too. Many projects aim to use two or fewer instances of passive tense. Apparently, Hemingway will suggest avoiding wordy sentences and improving your story's readability. Now, the downside to this free tool is that you must copy and paste your text into the website tool, but free doesn't always fit into your natural workflow. 
Now, the pro writing aid tool requires you to sign up for an account to utilize some free tools or invest in a paid subscription. The free and paid option checks for passive voice. What's advantageous is that this tool offers one click correction. Oh, you can click on the better choice from several options and fix your problem quickly. It's such a cool tool, I might consider switching from Grammarly to this one. Finally, the Passive Voice Detector is a web-based tool that does what it says it'll do. After you copy and paste or upload text into the analyzer, the tool will highlight when you use passive tense. There is also the zombies test, which you can turn on to check your sentence. This feature makes editing fun when you can summon the zombies. In summary, one way to transform your family history from boring to brilliant is to dig, dig in the details of your sentence syntax. By reducing passive voice using these tools, your readers will enjoy your story more. They just won't know why, <laughs> but you will. But now it's time for you to go write those stories. Off you go. On your way out, be sure to click the like button and leave a comment. I respond to every comment left and respond to them fairly quickly.